it, it's more of my responsibility to stay passionate about what I love. People who listen to music, this is who, that's who you create for. That's who I create. For. This is John Bellion, an artist that you probably do not know. I mean, look at the title. But why is John Bellion slept on when he is one of the most talented and creative artists that even invented his own genre while also creating songs for the likes of Justin Bieber and Eminem? So the real question is, why does it like the entire world <laughs> know about this guy, John yeah. Bellion? John was born in Long Island, New York. December 26, 1990. In the fifth grade, John's older brother brought home a keyboard, and this keyboard was responsible for igniting John's passion for music. John's older brother taught him how to make beats, but he didn't want him touching his stuff. So when John's older brother was at work, John would sneak downstairs and start making music. Later into college, he started a mixtape. Inspired by Kanye West's The College Dropout, he decided to, well, drop out and chase his passion in music. John started working for a catering job. A friend of his from college called up the Warner Music Group. He said they could fire him if they didn't give John a chance. He was that confident that John was gonna be something big. John got fired from his catering job three days later, but he got a call from Warner. They said they wanted the instrumentalist, the vocalist, the man who made the beats. But John simply said it was all him. It was just John in his dorm room. So John gets the job and already starts working on other people's records. And as he works on these records, he keeps getting better and better at music. And as he's writing these pieces and making these songs, the more he falls in love with the craft of music. About the next kid, it's about the kid who's 11 years old right now who hears this. And hopefully I could be a light to shine in somebody that says, yo, he's a creative dude and he does what he wants and he's very good at it because he, he cares about the craft. All the people that we've chosen to surround ourselves with and whatnot, we care about the craft of music making. Not like, give me a subpar beat, give me a sub, uh, make sure that the verse is really dope, but this, the beat's subpar, or the beat's retarded and the lyrics is eh, because we just want to make sure it's a hit because the beat's crazy. No. And people who listen to music, the people who listen to music, this is who, that's who you create for. That's who I create for. Now I know you may be wondering, what is this proclaimed new genre that John Bellion has made himself? Little stuff like that gets me so excited. I've been making just noises. I used to make noises with my mouth when I was younger as placeholders for drums. And then I realized if I make the, the noise in pocket dope enough, we could add to the swing of the drums, like right here. See, everything's moving nicer now because of two simple like beatbox things it's that, it's that easy so john definitely has a knack for this and he's very good at it i mean look how quick he makes the song up Back to the main topic at hand. Why isn't John Bellion known by everybody? He wrote The Monster for Eminem and Rihanna. He made Holy for Justin Bieber. And Maroon 5's most popular song is thanks to him. And John's clearly proven that he can make it to the top 10 charts. Well, it's because of a few simple words. I never wanna be famous, stop calling me underrated. John is clearly an advocate against fame. Proven with his work having shots at fame and celebrity life. You, you get too famous, then everything in your life is stressful. There's a big difference between being known and being successful. And his thoughts on interviews, plus how he develops himself as an artist. Like joke rappers who play video games and have video game YouTubes drop records and they go gold. And then out plaques like it's like it's candy on Halloween. If streams were the de definition of albums that influence people, 808s and heartbreaks, transatlanticism, donuts from Dilla would be the highest streaming things of all time. But right. they're not. So you're chasing more greatness than. Of 100%. Than if you're not from New York and don't know who Rock Marciano is and you love Oh, Low, 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 
Are you going to be excited that I'm doing string arrangements for Rock Marciano? I don't know, but I can't let that stunt my growth as somebody who wants to develop further as an artist. I think it's more of my responsibility to stay passionate about what I love and what I love to do. That's just making music. The fame and all this different stuff is, is a funny game. It's like a funny thing that we're weaving in and we're trying to find balance mentally, spiritually, physically, in, in all of these things. And I'm realizing like, I was on the road for almost a year and a half doing interviews I didn't want to do, doing things I didn't want to do, and I was miserable. So I'm thinking, you know, it hit me one day, I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. Like, whoa, like what a concept. Whatever the opinions that come from that. Oh, he doesn't do interviews anymore. He doesn't do this, he doesn't do that. But like, I'm happy in like the real world. So if I'm working on an album, the fun part for me is working on the album. It's not fun for me to go to Q102 Jingle Jam and shake some dude's hand who has no idea the music or the references I'm pulling from and whatever. It doesn't make me happy. Last time I did every interview under the sun. And by the time you saw your 15th interview, you're like, he did the monster, he works this, he does everything himself, and it, okay, now what? Like, let's wait for this until there's something to talk about. At least wait till a little people have an opinion about the album, not a 24-hour review. So John truly cares about what he puts out into the world, and he really means it. He doesn't even write his own lyrics, he just goes in by feel. You tell me, I'll take to my something. There's bones in my something. There's bones in my claw. There's bones in my claw. Bones in my grave. Bones in let them down that day there's bones in my closet dun 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 da da dun yeah that's such a nice melody there's bones in my closet but you end up anyway but you there's bones in my closet but you hang stuff anyway <laughs> so in this clip John is calling his friend Mark because he needs a bass line and here they create something special off the spot. So I was, I was messing around like some chord progressions and some, and some topics. I wrote a little something, whatever, whatever on the piano. First I want to attack this drum section. I have to find a way to kind of to meld the two worlds. There's a really pretty progression that we have within these drums. I just want to be drum and bass lines. So we have to figure out a way when we're going to bring it in and we're going to take it out. But just the drums for now. Just do you. Can we get him hooked up? Can we get that? Yeah, yeah. Give me the drums, give me the drums, give me the drums. When I hear him sing, it's like he's giving a piece of himself away. In that moment when my voice is cracking and I'm screaming and I'm pushing my vocal and it's not perfect, I felt like I was really singing for the first time in my life. The, the veil is kind of pulled down and, you know, me upholding this. I'm something beyond a normal guy. I need to be viewed as such is kind of just out the window. And this song kind of knocked down those doors for me. can't particularly tell but I'm fighting tears they're actually they're actually streaming down my face here I'm trying to trying to hold it in front of these guys and to see just how emotional and how much he cares about the music that he's making it's so human and connecting <laughs> 
So I'm gonna be honest. Main reason I made this video was because I wanted to thank John Bellion. I remember being freshman year, ninth grade. You know, I would listen to his music nightly, daily, whatever. His music to me always felt different. Like his music was always spoke to me in a way. In that lonely time, God, freshman year was really lonely. But John kind of helped me this time. I think it does a disservice to him, saying that he's just some pop artist. He is his own genre. Like, I've never listened to anyone else's music that, like, sounds like him. Now, you probably aren't watching this, John, but if you are, I just want to thank you for everything. So, yeah, thank you. I don't think my words do justice for John Billing. And what he's done for me, and what he may have done for you, to see such a passionate man for something that he truly loves and care about, you know, not be afraid to express it. It's so refreshing to also see an artist that, you know, has proven in the past and that has the capability of reaching the very top, but humbles himself and lets himself work on his work and not do it for the clout. And like every time I see him making music, I can't help but smile. It's like it's dragging all over the record, but it's just causing me like, like stumbling into the right pocket. You know I mean? If you seem to enjoy this video, please consider liking and do not forget to subscribe to be one of the first 999. Please be better than yesterday.